is lecture 15, part 1, and we will start a completely new topic again, and it's called search. But before that, I want to talk about the lecture indices, which have gone crazy again. Uh, so lecture 13 will not be posted until after the final exam. So the final exam of section 1, so before the final exam of section 2. Lecture 13 covers reinforcement learning, and it's not on the midterm, and it will not be on the final. So I'm going to record it at the end because I don't have time. I need to catch up with the, the lectures that will actually be on the final exam. And I also think reinforcement learning is kind of an important topic in machine learning and AI, so I will still record it, but I will do it at the end. And lecture 14 is a midterm review, so we have already done that, so it will be skipped. And lecture 15 is this lecture here. And after the midterm, I realized that some of you are confused about what these pre-recorded lectures and the Canvas BBCU lectures are, so I want to re repeat this. So these pre-recorded lectures are the official lectures of this year. They are not from last year. So if you look at the bottom right, uh, the time is 2020 summer. So it's not from last year's lecture. So there's there shouldn't be any inconsistencies from, say, this year and last year, because this is this year's official lectures. And as I said, it covers all relevant materials from the homework and the exams. So if you don't want to come to the BBCU lectures, you can learn all the materials that, that are relevant for this course by just watching these pre-recorded lectures. Okay, so that's the first thing. And the second thing is that the BBCU lectures only contain summaries and reviews. So basically, if you have watched my pre-recorded lectures and went to my say actual BBCU lectures, you can probably see that they are exactly the same. I just repeat the same things at the beginning and I talk about some additional examples. But the thing is on my website, I post those same examples from last year because the example that I use is just that they, they, they are just the quiz questions from last year. So if you go on my website at the end, I have the, these examples. So if you want to go through them, uh, it covers actually most of them. For some of them that I did not cover, I, I, I post the questions, I post the answers as well. So you can take a look at those. And before the midterm and also before the final, I will do the same thing. I'll go through a, a additional questions from the homework and so, so on. So if you combine all of them, you should have all the examples anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the BBCU lectures. And at the end, uh, the quizzes, so as I said at the beginning, the quizzes are not m mandatory. So at the beginning, I was thinking of not having the quizzes, so I will just have the exams and they are worth like 40% of the grade. But I think m maybe it's kind of too stressful to have a 40%, I mean 20% midterm and a 20% final within a limited time. So I thought m maybe I could change, I, I could move some of these weights to the quizzes. And that's the reason why I have quizzes. So again, they are not mandatory. It's just in case you want to to come and uh, ask some questions and it's, and have, have some kind of interactions and, and, and discussions with other students you can come to the quizzes. And that's also the reason why I don't want them to be recorded. So they are just like interactions and discussions of some questions. So I want to encourage people asking questions. If I record them, the, the biggest problem is uh, the recorded lecture on BBCU will contain the names of everyone asking the questions and it will also record the voice if you want to ask the question using the microphone. So I don't want to these to be recorded. I think personally it's a violation of privacy. So personally I prefer not to record these lectures. So as I said, the BBCU lecture materials are all on the website. I post all the annotated lecture notes 
and I posted all the examples and I have recording from last year to cover the same examples. And, and also more importantly, these pre-recorded lectures like this one contains all relevant materials. So that's what I want to repeat. I, I know it's kind of late, but I see that some of you are still confused what's happening here. So I want to talk about this again. Okay, so I apologize for the waste of time for everyone else and let's get started. Um, so this slide actually mentions reinforcement learning. So I'll actually talk about this, the comparison between reinforcement learning and search when I record the reinforcement learning lecture. So let's skip this here. What we're doing in this lecture called the search problem is basically we're not learning anything. We're just given a problem. We want to search for the solution. Basically, we want to try all possible choices and, and find the one that's basically the best. So there are lots and lots of applications. So the ones that we will use in the lectures are mainly puzzles and games. So we, we use some algorithm to solve puzzles and games automatically. Another big application is, say, Google Map. So Google Map. And basically, it's for navigation and route finding. And something else we will talk about at the end of this lecture is motion planning, which is how to control a robotic arm to pick up something or do something. And scheduling, we will actually not talk about this. It's more like a 577 topic. So it, it's an application of search, but we will not talk about it. OK, so let's get started with a game. Uh, it's the wolf, sheep, and cabbage game. And the link is on my website, the sheep game. And I actually opened this already. So let's start. So I'm basically a farmer, and I have sh wolf, sheep, and cabbage, and I want to move them to the other side of the river. But if I say pick up the wolf and then move, then the sheep will eat the cabbage. So then I fail. OK, if I move the cabbage, and obviously the wolf will eat the sheep, then I fail as well. So, well, the, the first step is obviously move the sheep. And if I go back, I did nothing. I can, but I did nothing. So I will just put down the sheep. And then next thing is probably move the wolf. And now I cannot go back, so I need to pick up the sheep and put down the sheep and do this. And at the end, success. OK, so that's basically the game. And we want to somehow represent this mathematically. So we will represent e each possible configuration of this game as a state. So at the beginning, basically, there's nothing on the left-hand side. There's everything, the farmer, the sheep, the wolf, and the cabbage on the right side. And then what we can do is we can take an action. So an action will be represented by an edge. And what, what happened was I moved the sheep to the other side, and the wolf and the cabbage are left on the right-hand side. OK, so the next action we can take, the only action actually going back, or we can actually go go back to the original state, but then we did nothing. Is here, we can leave the sheep, and then the farmer can go back. And now, at this point, there are two choices. I can either move the wolf or the cabbage. Then it becomes the farmer, the sheep, and the wolf, cabbage, or the farmer and the sheep and the cabbage, and then leave wolf on the other side. OK, so now, if we want to continue the search, continue the, the search for the solution, we could either continue in this branch and we, we basically start here and try to move until the end, or we can solve these two branches at the same time. So these are different approaches of solving the game, and they're called different search strategies. And, and this lecture and the next lecture are basically focused on different search strategies that make searching for the solution faster. So, 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 so again, 
in which order are we going to search? Are we going to find a solution? It's called a search strategy, and the focus of search problems are figuring out how to do this very efficiently and, and the fastest way possible. Okay, so let's summarize what just happened. So first, we're going to call all the configurations of the game um, the states. And then there is an initial state. So an initial state is basically everyone on the right-hand side. And there are goal states, which is everyone on the left-hand side of the river. So we will call the possible actions, so the list of possible states that, that can be reached by some kind of action, the successor function. So, for, for example, we have a valid state, farmer, sheep, and wolf, cabbage. Then the successor function is basically mapping to, there are two possible states that, that can happen. One is going back to the original state, fs. WC, the other one is just the farmer moving back. This. So the, these two states are called successor states, and, and the function that maps this state to these two is called the successor function. And there is a cost associated with each action. So we should have a cost, but for this lecture, we will not worry about the cost. So for the next lecture, we, we will talk about the cost, but here we are just assume the cost of every action is equal is one. And the search problem in general is finding a path, so finding basically a sequence of successor states from the initial state to the end state, and usually we want to minimize the total cost. So here again, we just want to minimize the total number of steps because we assume the cost is one for each possible action. And some general properties of the state space, so the states needs to represent all relevant information, obviously, and the actions must be must be d discrete and deterministic. So we will actually talk about continuous and random actions at the end when we talk about game theory. But f for now, for for these two weeks, at least, we will not talk about those. And uh, e e each action is associated with each successor state. So I said that already. OK, so let's talk about another example, the 8 puzzle. And I only have the 16 puzzle instead of the 8 puzzle. So the 8 puzzle is we have 9. Oh, 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 only nine of the tiles, and we have one missing, and we want to rearrange it so, so that we can get back to the original order of the tiles. So here, for, for, for example, the successor states with this state, and by, by the way, each state is represented by a matrix, a matrix of these numbers, and not all states are possible, by the way, but and all the states, all the possible states can be represented by a 4 by 4 matrix here. And the, say the initial state is this state, then the final state is with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in, in, in that particular order. So the successor states are, you can either move here or you move here. So there are two successor states if we are currently at this state. If we are currently here, then we have three successor states, one, two, three. And if we are here at this state, then we have four successor states. We can move seven, nine, 12, or one. So that's basically the game, and we'll talk more about this as an example later. And as you saw for the four by four or the 16 or 15 puzzle, we already have lots and lots of possible states. And if we are talking about some, some games, then we have even more possible states. So it's kind of hard to go through all of them. So we do need some kind of smart strategy to figure out how to reach the goal state very quickly, because for, for these games, we don't want to go through all possible states. 
And of course, mathematically, we're going to represent the state space by a weighted directed graph. So a weighted directed graph is basically a tuple. It's the list of vertices, the edges, and, and the edge costs. So the vertices here, they are the states. And the edges here, they are the possible actions that we can move from one state to another state. And the C is the cost. So as I said, C is 1 for this lecture. And uh, in, in general, we just assume the costs are positive. So we, we, we don't have the negative edge weight problem. And by definition, the search problem is basically we start from the initial state and we finish if we reach one of the goal states and the solution is just a path in the graph. So it's basically the same idea on a graph, but we're just using the terminology of a graph. And the cost solution, I mean the cost of a solution is the sum of edge costs and the optimal solution is, well, optimal with the lowest cost. And we'll introduce even more terminology and expanding a vertex or expanding a node means I'm generating all the successor states and add them to the search tree. So we will keep track of where we are by using a search tree. Because at the beginning, I don't know all the states. So I will just start from the initial state. And I keep, say, expanding, basically generating all the successors. And then if we generate it this way, it will form a tree. And we're going to call this the, the, the search tree. And so basically, we start from this. And we search all possible ones, all possible successors. And the leaves of these search trees, so these ones are called the frontier. Sometimes they are called the fringe, but I never use that word, so I, I usually call it the frontier. Basically, where we are, the, the leaves of the search tree is the frontier. And, and the search strategy basically differ from how we expand, so I talked about this already. Okay, so let's talk about yet another example of a game or a puzzle. So it's the water jugs example. I think I opened this tab already, yes. Um, so the game, I think, is from the movie Die Hard. And the story is basically Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis. They're fighting some terrorists. And, um, and for some reason, they need to get four liters of water. But they only have a jug with capacity five liters and another jug with capacity three liters, and they want to get four liters. So the way to do this, I remember, is you should fill the five liter one first, and then you can transfer it to the three liter one. So then you have two liters remaining, and I remember you can empty this one and transfer two liter there, and then you can fill it again. And if you transfer it again, it will transfer one liter, so you have four liters remaining, so you get the full liter of water. Yes. So that's basically the game. And we can choose different numbers for the capacities and for the amount of water we want. But in any case, the idea is we start from a state, and we want to generate a search tree. We start from the zero, zero state. And then what we can do is we can expand this node, again, using the terminology. Expanding means generating all possible successors. And the successor for this state is either 5, 0, so I fail the first one, or I fail the second one. And next, we need to expand the one here. So at this moment, the, f the frontier is the list of these two states. Note that we don't need to store anything that's not in the frontier because I don't need to know what our original state is. I just need to care about where we are at the moment. So 5 can be turned into 5, 3, or I can move the 5 to, to, to the 3. So 2 and 3, basically, that's what we did. Or we can actually go back. So going back, we probably don't want to do these things. So I will ignore that. And the next step, 
basically determines what kind of search strategy you are going to use. It's whether I continue with this branch or I start with the other branch and move them at the same time. So for example, suppose we want to move them at the same time, then, I mean, expand them at the same time, then the three can be turned into five, three as well, and it can be turned into three, zero. So, so, so basically fail transfer the three to the five liter jug. And then we can expand all of them at the same time. It will become a large tree. Or another strategy is let's try to go from one of the branches and see if we can reach the goal. And for the people who know how to solve these problems already, they are called either BFS breadth first search or depth first search. And we'll talk about these in part two and three of this lecture. In any case, suppose we follow the path that we actually used and 3.2 can be expanded to, there are multiple possibilities. I will just use the one that we have, 2 and 0. And in theory, you need to write down all the other successors, and that's called expanding this, but I will just have one path. And then we can go to 0.2, 0 0.2 0 two can go to 5.2, and then 4, and uh, 3. So that's the goal state, and once we reach the goal, we stop. So, so that's basically the idea. As I said, we can expand it to a very large tree, and at the end, we will reach this for sure. So there are tricks of expanding which one first to make it fast, but it turns out for the water jug problem, you cannot. You just need to search through all possible ones in some particular order and then you can find the final one. Because we, we, we don't actually know, unlike some other problems where we know some states are possibly closer to the goal state than some other states. And by the way, we'll cover this in the next lecture called Informed Search. But here, we don't know any information about which states when we are closer to the goal. So, so basically, in these cases, we have no extra information about the states, then we need to search through all of them and we need to basically expand everything in, in some particular order. Okay, so, so two important measures of whether a search strategy is good or not is first is the, the whether the search strategy can find at least one solution. I think that's the bare minimum. If it cannot, then it doesn't make sense to use this strategy. Uh, so it's called completeness. And, 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 and another thing is whether it's optimal. So we are not focused on optimality for this lecture because we don't care about the cost, but a search strategy is optimal if it finds the solution with the lowest cost. And, and another measure of whether a structure strategy is good, obviously, is how long it takes. So they are called complexity. So there are two types of complexities. First is time complexity. So as I said, it's just how long do we need? So basically, how many times do we need to expand the vertices so that we can find the goal? And time complexity is defined as the worst case maximum number of vertices that we expanded. The other one is called the space complexity. So as I said before, we only care about the states on the frontier. We don't care about the states above the frontier because we searched them already, we don't need them. So the space complexity is basically how much information do we need to store during the search. And it's defined as the worst case maximum number of states that are stored in the frontier at a single time during the whole search. And we also need some notations for the search tree. So let me actually use a diagram, but basically the goals are at depth D and the maximum depth is large D and the number of branches. So number of branches is defined as the maximum number of branches within the tree. So let me actually show you a diagram. I mean, draw a diagram. So suppose we search like this, and there may be two of them, and maybe there's one. And let's have something like this. Then suppose the goal state is here. Then the goal state is at depth two. So that would be D, and D should be equal to two. And 
the the deepest part is called large D, and in this case, large D is to three, so there are three levels basically. And the branching factor is B is the maximum number of branches, so it's the max of say there are three branch, two branch, and one branch, which is three here. 